If you are interested in using Ecamm Live's interview mode, either as a host or a guest, then stick around because I'll be diving into how to do that from both sides of the equation in this video. Hello and welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec and uh, in this video we're going to be diving into uh, interview mode in Ecamm Live and if you didn't know exactly what that was, well as part of the Ecamm Live Pro level subscription uh, you do get interview mode and that basically allows you to bring in up to four guests into your live streams or your recorded productions uh, and you simply send out a link and they get to join in the conversation with you and you can add them in just uh, as a, I'll show you shortly as basically another camera source. Um, so the thing is if you are a host, then there's obviously things that you need to do to set this up. But if you are a guest, uh, the first time you do it, it might be a little bit daunting. I know it was for me when I uh, joined somebody's live stream for the first time and they'd sent out the link and I clicked the link. I didn't really know what to expect. You know, we're probably all familiar with uh, things like Zoom and Teams and Skype or any other things where you kind of know what you're to expect when you click a join link. Whereas with this, it might be completely new to you. And uh, it might be something that actually puts people off clicking the link because they don't know what to expect. Are they going to go straight into the production? Are they uh, going to get to choose their camera and things like that? Well, this video will answer all of those questions, hopefully, as well as uh, all of the ones that you're going to have as a host as well. So let's start with things from the host side and the things that you will need to set up first of all. Uh, as I've said, it is something that is available on the Pro Ecamm Live uh, subscription level. So there are two levels of uh, subscription and this is on the higher level. Uh, so the basic plan doesn't have interview mode. But if you are on the Pro level, uh, if I come into my demo mode, then we can activate uh, interview mode. Uh, either come up to the window at the top, window menu, and then come down to uh, interview and that will open up the little panel or from the main sort of preview window here we've got, then you can click on this little one that looks like two people and that will bring up the interview mode panel. Now I should have actually switched this off because when you click it for the very first time, it will be toggled off. So this is where you can switch it on and off and you just need to click the little toggle switch to turn it on. And uh, here you can see, I mentioned you get 20 hours a month with the pro plan of interview mode. And here it says, I've got 16 hours remaining at the moment. So that's where you'll know how many hours of interview time you've got remaining. And uh, there is a link basically that you send out to people or you give to people who you want to join. And so you just click on here and it will copy that link. Now what you can do is you can also, uh, if you've got a domain and you want to remap the uh, the link to make it easier to remember because the link is a uh, uh, join.ecamlive slash and then a series of numbers and letters. Uh, so if you want to make it more memorable, you could uh, actually do domain forwarding uh, and forward your uh, URL forwarding rather to forward a URL to your interview link. Uh, so I have takeonetech.live slash join and that is the link to join in my uh, my live streams. So uh, before I actually go and show you how to uh, use this from the other side, I will also just run through some other settings. So if we come into the preferences in Ecamm Live and here we've got uh, some interview preferences. So we've got all these different sections at the top. Well, we've got one specifically for interview here. So if we uh, come and have a look at these, most of these are the default settings, by the way, but I'll just run through them anyway. So the first one is when somebody actually clicks your link and goes through the process of getting themselves set up on their end and dials in, uh, then and uh, do they dial in? Not sure. <laughs> but anyway, when they uh, click to join, then it will play a ring chime on your side. So, uh, so you want that, obviously, just to let you know that somebody's calling. Otherwise, there'll be uh, nobody will know they're there. <laughs> the next thing is auto answer guests. Now, this is off by default, and I would recommend leaving it off because it's basically just leaving the door of your house open. <laughs> you don't want people gate crashing your productions if, uh, if you're not ready to receive them. So uh, definitely leave that off so that you get to see that somebody's calling and decide whether you want to let them in or not. Next one is send guests to the green room. So that's a virtual green room with virtual tea and coffee and virtual cakes. <laughs> that means that when they join, they're not going to come straight into your production. They're going to be in this little sort of uh, holding area, a holding pen, <laughs> and you can decide when you're going to release them into your stream. <laughs> so that's uh, what the green room is. But we'll see how all of this works on a practical level uh, when I uh, do the little demonstration afterwards. Uh, next one is called musician mode. And this says uh, turn off audio process for guests. So when it is unchecked, <laughs> then audio processing is, uh, is on. But when you check it on, then audio processing is off. 
Does that make sense? <laughs> because basically as a default, you have some audio processing that goes on that Ecamm Live does so that basically it stops any echo. So if, if the guests are not wearing headphones, for example, then the Ecamm Live itself will do the sort of, uh, it's called mix minus, where it's basically listening for your sound coming back over your guest speakers. And then it's removing that from the signal that they're sending back over their microphone. So that sort of echo cancellation is uh, quite important if you don't know the audio setup that your guests have got but there may be times when you want to turn that audio processing off because you that you know that you know that they've got a good signal on their end and they're all set up for it properly and perhaps you don't want to have any sort of distortion or anything like that going on with the audio and I guess that's why they call it musician mode um, but just note it does give you a little bit of a description here uh, this will use a higher bit rate uh, and also it says note that since the guest's echo cancellation will be disabled as I've just mentioned uh, headphones must be used so definitely if you're going to ever have this one uh, toggled uh, toggled on so audio processing is off then they've got to be wearing headphones otherwise you'll get this sort of feedback loop it also says a chrome browser is required for this and also on the desktop so people can join from their mobile phones uh, just as easily as they can from the desktop but if you're going to have this one toggled on they need to be on a desktop in google chrome Next one is uh, the guest web interface defaults to dark mode. Uh, now, I always just used to force that on people because I like to force my opinions on people and I think dark mode is the best. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But uh, Doc Rock actually had a great uh, point about this, which is the reason why you would want to force dark mode onto the uh, viewer's browser is because otherwise, if you have a bright white screen, then it might affect the lighting. You might find that there's a lot of glare in their face and it might just affect the picture. So having a sort of dark screen is going to be much better if they've got uh, otherwise got uh, good lighting. So that is the reason why you may want to toggle that one on. Uh, not just to force your dark mode opinions on people. <laughs> so the next one down is uh, guest web interface uh, displays comments and view account. So I'll leave that one on so that the, uh, the guest can also see comments and uh, the view account <laughs> as it says there um, but then you could choose to have that one off if you thought it may be distracting or if the guest uh, wasn't going to be a part of that for some reason I don't know I'll leave that for you to decide I just leave it on the uh, next one is lower music and sound effect for guests when in off air mode now off air mode is basically defined as uh, if I look over at my sound levels panel over here uh, you can see that I've got my my own sound level here, but then I've also got the interview uh, sound level. So that's the sound that's coming over anybody who's joined on interview mode. And basically off air mode is defined as any time where the guest is muted, muted as well <laughs> and the reason why you would have that is basically if you think about maybe you're doing a live stream something like that and the live stream is about to start and you've got guests in uh, that are waiting and that are you know there ready to go uh, but you've got some music playing out or maybe you're playing a movie or something like that uh, so off-air mode is defined as when you are both muted and what it will basically do is it won't affect the volume of everything that's going out in the stream, but on your guests' side, they will hear the uh, the output volume uh, reduced for any music or movie sounds or anything like that so that they can basically hear you better. One thing to note, though, is it doesn't actually at the moment work both ways. So you will still hear the full sound levels that are going out in the stream and there won't be any uh, audio ducking, which is where they're sort of reducing the volume of the music so that you can hear your guest. It has been submitted uh, a number of times as a feature request, uh, but it's one of those things that uh, uh, depends on how many people want it really. But having that sort of two-way may be useful, but it's not currently available. So just in case you were wondering. The next thing down is the guest view. So this is basically what your guest is going to see on their end when they are in the call. And we'll see how this is going to work in a moment when I do the little demo uh, of somebody joining the call. Um, but basically, this is where you choose what they see. So I have this set as broadcast and it is the default. And that means that basically they're going to see whatever you are putting out into your production. And so that seems logical, really, doesn't it? Because you're going to want them to see what's going on. Uh, you're going to want to see want them to see when when they may be spotlighted so they're sort of full screen or something like that or maybe when there's other guests talking or things like that that are spotlighted you want them to be a part of the, uh, the the sort of overall production and be able to see what's going on I would have thought uh, but you can also have it to be just the host camera so that basically they're only seeing you 
Now, I am actually going to change it to that just for today, for this demonstration. And the reason is, uh, I don't want there to be a sort of infinite loop of uh, me showing you somebody looking at me showing you something else, <laughs> if you see what I mean. So I'm going to change that to host camera for now, but it should become quite clear what we're looking at in the uh, in the end when I do the demo. Uh, the demo. So, uh, I think it's tripped over my words then. <laughs> so let's just close the preferences for now. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go over to my uh, guest computer. So I'll come out of demo mode here and then I'll go over to my guest computer. So this is now basically I'm um, all ready to go on a uh, computer where I've put in my little shortcut link. So that's take one tech dot live slash join. And when I click uh, the enter or return, you can see how it's changed to a uh, guest dot ecamm live dot uh, and then a series of letters and numbers. <laughs> that is my my handy <laughs> code for joining my uh, my productions. And here you can see that it has loaded up my uh, uh, camera and my microphone. Now it will default to whatever you've last used, uh, but as you can see, I can choose any camera that I've currently got. So it's basically you've, it's just like you would have in in Zoom or any other application like that. You can basically choose any of the uh, system cameras. So uh, this is this is me on my little Logitech that I've got plugged in <laughs> to my uh, laptop. So there's where you can set the camera, and then you can also just as easily set the uh, the microphone. So if you are using something like um, uh, he says forgetting the name of it, loopback. <laughs> For example, if you use that with Zoom and things like that, then you can set that up with, uh, you know, you could have a loopback set up for Chrome or something like that so that you could have a virtual uh, uh, virtual device. Uh, in fact, I beg your pardon, not necessarily loopback. Yeah, it would be more something like audio hijack. I mean, if you've got a, you know, signal processing and things like that going on. Uh, so for example, in here, I have a uh, a processed uh, signal from my Shure MV7 so that one I could select although my Shure MV7 has now moved over to my new uh, <laughs> computer. So uh, I'll just leave it as the default internal microphone although I would obviously strongly recommend that you avoid using those or tell your guests to avoid using those if at all possible but I've actually turned the, uh, the uh, muted it internally so that we don't get any feedback. But hopefully now you, you can basically see what the interface is looking like for the guest. Uh, so here we go. If I scroll down a little bit, uh, you can also put your name in. So I've entered my name as uh, mini me <laughs> and uh, it will remember all of these uh, settings as well for next time you join if you haven't closed down your browser window. And then you can click on uh, join. And so you'll see it is connecting now. That little sound, which you may have heard, if I come back into demo mode, it's now saying that I've got a guest joining. So here you can see Mini Me is joining. So uh, what I'll do is if I just, uh, you can see obviously this window in the middle is still what's going on on my uh, my other laptop. And so from here, you can see that we've got, it says that we're connecting and then it's also got my uh, sort of camera output. So you can see what the uh, the view is that is gonna go out. You can also see just down here, by the way, that there is a toggle for uh, light and dark. In fact, I'm not <laughs> showing you what it is. My mouse wasn't moving, was it? So just down in this bottom corner, we've got a little toggle for uh, light and dark if the uh, if the guest wanted to change that. But coming back to the uh, demo mode, uh, so Mini Me is joining. So if I click on the answer or decline, so this is why you want to not allow people to auto join because uh, if you get a call unexpectedly and you don't want it, then you can just reject it. But I'll uh, I'll let him in, shall I? He seems like a nice enough chap to me. <laughs> so there we go. Now we have got the uh, the guest is in the green room. Now you can see it on this this monitor here, uh, but that's because you're obviously looking at what uh, what Mini Me is seeing. So if I just go back to uh, that view for a moment, uh, so here we can see that uh, now uh, the guest can see the, my uh, view as the uh, as the host, my camera, because remember I selected that they could see my camera feed. Uh, and we've still got my image there, and you can see that mute sign, and that is because that's to denote that the host has muted them or that they are muted because they are in the green room. So let me just come back to uh, this scene and if I uh, come into my screen sharing once again and I'll just change out of that one for a moment just so that we don't get confused by all of these different things. So now the guest is sitting there in the green room. You can add them into your production by clicking one of these buttons and either you can solo them so that means basically they're going to go straight into full screen and they'll be uh, they'll be oops, excuse me, hit <laughs> the uh, mic stand. They'll be uh, soloed on the screen. Um, but what I'm gonna do actually is, first of all, I'm gonna create a completely new scene. So I'll create a new empty scene. 
and I'm going to put the source as a camera. So there you go. Now you can see me in green screen <laughs> in all my glory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my uh, uh, background just to, so that we don't get confused by all of these green screens. So uh, whoops, Daisy, it's the wrong one. I can't do two things at once. I can't uh, click and think at the same time. So now I want to change back to my normal background. There we go. So we don't get confused. So the one that you see, if you, if you see Alec with a green screen, that is my laptop. And if you see me with this artificial background, <laughs> then that's me on my uh, main computer. So what you can see here as well is that I've cunningly been added into the camera switcher. So uh, we've got my Canon camera here um, and uh, the, uh, the guest is showing there. So what I could do is I could simply add the guest like this by clicking solo and now they've uh, come straight into uh, full screen uh, or I could add them left which basically is um, uh, in fact what I need to do now is I'd need to come back to this mode. <laughs> if I click on add left then it's going to put them side by side with me. So if I just uh, come out of this again and I'll just click close down that one or I could add right and they will appear on the right side. So this is a simple way uh, to add the guest in. Now this is only going to work actually if you do have the source as being the camera source so that is when you've got your source as a camera this is getting a bit weird to see two of me speaking and I'm sure uh, one of me is more than enough anyway <laughs> if not too much so uh, so yeah if you've got your source as the camera then you can uh, just basically add them in like that but what you can also do is if you've got multiple guests you can also assign them to a guest number so I could assign guest one two three and four so if I assign this as guest one uh, now you can see that on the camera switcher it's actually changed to guest one and what that means is if you want to add in the guests as a camera overlay for example just as you would do if you were adding your own camera overlays you could click the little plus button to get a camera overlay and uh, then you could come to the little uh, thing here to select the camera and instead of my uh, Canon camera I could click this little down here and uh, the down arrow rather and then select guest one uh, mini me and there you go you can do all of the things that you could do with another uh, a normal camera view basically so we could change the look and everything like that so you could have your guests over here if you wanted so that is how you basically add in your guests and what I should just do now as well if I come out of demo mode for a moment and I'll go back to the view so you should now be able to see what my guest is seeing so as the guest you are basically uh, if you remember that I had it set so that it was going to show uh, my uh, my camera view so this is what the guest is say seeing they are seeing me and then they're seeing their uh, their own picture there but if I just quickly while this is running I'm just going to toggle back to that default setting in uh, Ecamm Live for where instead of seeing the host camera, they're going to see the broadcast. And this is where we're going to get this infinite loop. So if I click broadcast now, you can see how they're now seeing the production. So this is how most people would want to run it, where basically your guest is seeing the production that you are putting out. So I hope that uh, makes sense. So now let me show you how you can use this. If I just come out of this mode for a moment, come back to uh, this one. And uh, in fact, let me go back to that other scene. Uh, in fact, no, <laughs> I'm very indecisive today. Let me come into, back into demo mode and I'm going to show you how uh, basically you can set up different scenes and just add in all of these cameras. So uh, let me just uh, close this one down for a moment. And uh, what I'll do is I'll show you some scenes that I set up for when I have a uh, call in. So uh, if I come to this scene, for example, so this is basically I've got a scene and I've got these two different cameras and you can see that I've just basically set this up and that is guest one. Uh, now, the reason why there's this big gap at the bottom is because what I usually do is I usually have a lower third that basically has my join link. So this is what I use on my live streams. It has a space for my uh, my lower third with my join link. Uh, and uh, that's my new moniker, by the way, Recovering Perfectionist. Look out for T-shirts and hats coming to a uh, merch store near you soon. <laughs> uh, so then I've got a space underneath for comments. So if you are doing something where you're having a... Um, uh, like a call in or something like that then just sort of bear in mind the layouts of these so that you do have uh, space for things like comments and stuff like that so um, I can also obviously have uh, more guests so we can have up to four guests so I've created another couple of scenes so I've got this one so if you have a guest two and if I come over to the demo mode here and if I assign to guest two instead then you'll see that I basically switch over to the guest two position 
and I could have a four guest setup as well. Uh, I won't add four of me in, that's uh, far too much for anyone to stomach, I think. <laughs> and then also, you, because you've got five guests, you could actually have a five guest setup. So in that case, uh, there'd be no need to have this on. Uh, although this one actually doesn't leave much room for comments, does it? But uh, I'm guessing if uh, if we've got five people on, then there may not be time to, uh, to actually talk about too many comments. So I probably need to edit this one though with hindsight. So there we go, that is the setup. So how do you set up one of these scenes? Well, let's go through the process of how to do that, shall we? Because it is pretty straightforward, really. If you know how to add in scenes and things like that, there, then, uh, then there's nothing particularly, nothing particularly new here. <laughs> Still tripping over my words. So I'll start with an empty scene. I'm gonna assign this guest back to guest number one. And uh, basically, uh, let me just call this scene uh, two up. Uh, there we go, so just rename the scene. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in a camera. So we come down to this area here and we just click on the camera overlay. So there we go, I've got my uh, my initial scene and uh, my initial camera. And uh, I'm gonna go and change this to be a green screen and change my backdrop just so that we're not confused. And you can see that there we go, that's my normal thing. And you can basically do anything with this that you can do with, uh, with any other scenes. Obviously, I'm sure you all know how to do this by now. Uh, so I'll just change that to, uh, let's say, uh, custom so that we can make it any shape or size uh, we want. And then you can obviously uh, zoom and adjust these. And I will show you how uh, this is important when it comes to adding in your guests as well. Uh, now I'm gonna add another camera. So I'll uh, just click on here, or I could just do option and drag one across. And uh, if you do option and drag it across, then it's gonna just make sure that it's the same size, which may uh, or may not be helpful. So, uh, sorry, I've just got my uh, Pro Mouse drawing tool there. I've been talking about ProMouse and how it's uh, how it's great and I have no issues with it. And it's just uh, <laughs> obviously not quite set up right on my computer at the moment. So just started drawing on my uh, screen, never mind. So there we go, now I've got another uh, box the same size. So I can click here and I can change that to, uh, let me just do uh, guess two, because obviously you can set all of these up in advance. This is the point. You can set up all of your scenes that you're gonna want with however many guests that you may have. Uh, and I've just set up, I've never actually had five guests on my, uh, four guests on my live stream, but I've still made the uh, the scenes for them already anyway. Uh, so you would just add that in as guest one, two, three, or four. And then when you come to actually add your guests in, then they will just magically appear there like that. So then you can obviously make whatever overlays you want to uh, to make. Um, but let's just say that uh, one of your guests joins and they are maybe sort of sitting like this. <laughs> they're sitting in completely the wrong place and they're off to one side or something like that or they're not centered. Just bear in mind that what you can do is if you come over to the camera settings, you can actually change those just as you could for another camera. So you could come over here and I could change the zoom and pan. So maybe I would want to... Uh, don't want to zoom out, but maybe uh, don't really want to zoom in either. But <laughs> the point is you can actually move the, uh, the camera around. So in fact, let me just move this out of the way a little bit, move it back slightly. So say I wanted to just adjust this picture. Uh, the trouble is the camera is pretty well placed really. So <laughs> but I hope I'm proving the point that you can actually make some edits. The other things that you can do is you can also adjust the uh, the colors as well. So if you want to change the brightness, we can change the brightness. So if they are in a dark room, you can adjust that from here. You can also adjust the temperature and things like that uh, or the tint and you can apply LUTs and so on. Or if you want to mirror the camera or whatever. So sometimes people come in depending on the way they're set up, they might actually have a mirrored feed coming out to you. Uh, so writings backwards in the background and things like that. So you could actually mirror that for them. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, you've basically got all of the camera controls that you would have if you were uh, on you know, any, any other camera that you could have in Ecamm Live. So uh, that is um, basically how, uh, how it's going to look from the, uh, the, <laughs> the, the guest's standpoint and from the host's standpoint. But let me just show you one other thing, which I think I may have neglected to cover, is basically if you are in the uh, guest view, uh, so let me just change this back because it does get confusing when you have this sort of infinite loop. So I'm going to change this back so that I'm just giving my uh, host camera back to the guest. And we're now looking at what the guest is seeing on their screen. So I'm gonna come down here as well and you have got the option here of uh, 
Is my mouse gone? <laughs> you have got the option here of changing the settings. So if at any point you do need to change the settings of your uh, camera, then you can always change those in uh, in here. So if you need to change the, uh, the camera or change the microphone or something like that, then you can do that in here. But I'm just going to click done. And then also you can also click the uh, mute button. So if you want to mute yourself, uh, then you can do that from within the uh, the interface itself there as well. And when you're ready to hang up, then uh, you can just click the hang up button. Or alternatively, uh, if you are the host, then if I come back to my screen sharing, uh, one second, uh, this one, <laughs> my demo mode, then you can also hang up there as well. Now, incidentally, when you are doing a live stream, when, when you end the live stream, the guest is still connected. So they haven't been you know, booted off, they don't automatically get cut off when the uh, stream ends. So that means that if you have got stuff that you want to uh, talk through or you want to have a, you know, a little uh, uh, summing up or whatever after the stream's finished or chat about how it went, then they will still be there and you still will be able to talk to them. And uh, the same things will, uh, will apply. So they'll be able to see whatever you've got that setting as. So if you want to change it to be uh, that they can see you or if you've got an end scene, for example, and the broadcast's finished, then if you remain on that end scene, then they may well just be only getting that, that, that back, although you'll be able to see them in this little preview window. So just bear in mind that once you've ended the broadcast and you maybe have like an end scene or something like that, you may want to just change back to one so that they can actually see you uh, when you have that sort of final conversation and sign off. So I think I've more or less covered it, but if anybody has got any questions about uh, interview mode or has got anything that any any un unanswered questions that I haven't covered in here, more to the point, then uh, do uh, do let me know. And uh, if you know if you've had any issues with it that uh, haven't been addressed in here, then let me know as well and down in the comments uh, because it all helps uh, not just me to learn and do a better job of uh, providing information, but also there may be other people who are having these issues as well, and it could help them. So uh, and while you're down in the comments, obviously. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on notifications so that you get alerted whenever I make any more videos. I've got a ton of Ecamm Live videos, <laughs> so I will leave a link to all of my Ecamm Live playlists over on the right-hand side. Uh, so do check out those. And in the meantime, have a great day.